Shares of Mattel are trading lower by 6.6%. That's despite the company reporting better than expected third quarter results. The company did uh, come out with an outlook that disappointed some investors. Joining us now for some perspective, city leisure and travel analyst James Hardiman. He also happened to initiate coverage on Mattel last week that they buy rating. James, it's good to see you. It's always good to see you. Um, so Likewise. there were a lot of high hopes for Barbie here, right? Um, not just for last quarter, but more going forward into the holiday season. What do you think is going on here at Mattel? What's your first blush reaction? Yeah, I mean, the first plus reaction is that this is not a, a Barbie issue at all. Um, what's become yeah. clear is that I think a lot of investors are trying to look at their business sort of ex Barbie, Barbie, uh, I should say, so that we can try to figure out what earnings power looks like for 2024. And so it was a really good third quarter. They beat by about 30, uh, 33 cents, but they only raised by a nickel. Uh, and so I think the interpretation here is that the fourth quarter is guided down, call it 27 cents. I, I think the, the, the implied guidance for the fourth quarter is 26 cents. Uh, the street was at 48. And so the, the interpretation here is that they're guiding down the rest of their business uh, effectively uh, for the fourth quarter. Um, I guess the other way to look at it is they, they had sized the Barbie effect um, about a month and a half ago. Uh, to be about $125 million, that's about a 20 cent benefit. Uh, and again, they're only raising five cents here. And so I think a lot of people are just thinking about how difficult it's gonna be to hit the 2024 number, given that the 23 numbers are, are barely going up, despite what was a really uh, impressive contribution from Barbie. And James, on the, on the top line in your note, you, you point out the missing narrative ingredient here is the reignition of the top line. So do you see reignition happening here, James, on the top line? And what would drive that? Yeah, I mean, certainly um, they grew the top line nicely in the third quarter. Um, the, the implied uh, revenue growth for the fourth quarter is about 15 percent. So we are beginning to see that pick up. The challenge is the street was at about 25% growth uh, for the fourth quarter. So, you know, we're seeing the reaction in the stock, which is, you know, effectively that that growth that they're they're guiding to um, implicit in the fourth quarter number is, is not quite what the street is looking for. And maybe more concerning that it's going to be a challenge once we get, get to the third quarter of next year and the fourth quarter of next year, for that matter, to lap this uh, pretty meaningful uh, Barbie benefit. Um, so I'm looking at gross billings in North America in particular, which were up 10 percent overall. Strength in dolls, including Barbie, not surprising. Strength in Hot Wheels and weakness in pretty much everything else from action figures to building sets, infant, toddler and preschool. That's Thomas and Friends, uh, the, the well-known brand there. What's going to reignite this stuff? Is it going to be some of the property, you know, some of the other media properties that they're talking about linked to some of these brands? Is it going to be the macro environment? What do you think? Yeah, I think it's all of the above. I, I think you nailed it. Uh, dolls are doing really well. Vehicles are doing well. Preschool is down a little. Action figures are down a lot. Now, the latter, I think, is, is a function of some difficult entertainment comparisons. And so in any given quarter, any given year, you've, you've got you know, you've got a portfolio and some of your brands, some of the categories are going to be up and some of them are going to be down. Um, I think as you fast forward to next year, interestingly enough, I think preschool and action figures um, should at least flatten out. The challenge is, you know, what what's going to happen in the dolls category? Interestingly enough, vehicles have, have um, that category has maybe been um, the most resilient over the last few years. Uh, got it, you know, did well during the pandemic, but even post pandemic, um, we've continued to see growth there. So, you know, a lot of it is is sort of what's going to offset what. And I think as we sit here today, um, I think investors are struggling with just how conservative is this guidance or does it reflect a real slowdown in, in top line trends uh, ex Barbie. But the other piece that we don't know is, you know, what's the entertainment opportunity for next year? So many of these toys um, are really driven off of, of entertainment offerings, uh, the, the, that their demand is a reflection of, of uh, entertainment. And so until we have a better idea of what the entertainment slate looks like for 24, it's a little difficult to tell. 
James, I gotta say, you don't necessarily sound like a guy with the buy rating on the stock, right? <laughs> it's it, the way, at least the tone that you're expressing is much more uncertain. Why why buy the stock here? Yeah, I mean, I, I think so much of um, I think the hedging, the uncertainty is is you know the same thing that I think investors are faced with here, and that is this is an uncertain holiday season, right? And, and we felt good to be able to maintain their guidance, hopefully raise, and we saw that. But now we got to button up for for a holiday season, which you know, by all accounts, I mean, consumers are pensive, consumers are conservative. They're being hit with with higher interest rates and and higher inflation, and so we're going to have to see. I think longer term is is really the excitement um, that we have for Mattel, and I, I think what what a, a lot of this analysis misses is I do think the success of Barbie is not just a one hit wonder. I think there's opportunity for sequels. I think there's opportunity for Mattel to really step up their entertainment game in some of these other brands. Um, is that going to help the, the the comparisons in 2024? Maybe not. Uh, but I think when if, if we think from a long term perspective, once we get past some of this macro malaise, once we get past some of these difficult comparisons, I think there's a lot of value here. All right, we'll be looking ahead to the Hot Wheels movie and whatever else is coming down the pike. James Hardiman, great to catch up with you as always. Appreciate it. Likewise. Thanks, guys.